because you are in control, you're still giving us hope because our eyes, our heart is really focused on you alone. Huwag tabangi kami gino, nga magapadayon kami sa pagpangalaga diha kanimo. Bless our worship today and give us a worshipful heart that everything nga paggawas na mo will not be empty-handed but will be full of your Holy Spirit and satisfied with all spiritual nourishments today. Thank you for all these things. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us all rise as we come to the reading of God's Word. Let's reflect God's Word found in Isaiah 9 and 6. And this is a famous passage open found in mga songs. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. May the Lord bless us upon the reading of this word. Be seated, please. Praise God today because we come to reflect on God's word. And uh, this is all about um, account for zero thing, about the word of God. Kining uh, first advent, the advent of hope, o ang atong pagtuo, paglaom, naadiha sa ginoo. Can you still remember of uh, the different promises, prophecies in the Bible telling us about the coming of the Messiah. There's a lot from the Old Testament, down from Genesis, down to Malachi. There's a lot of prophecies told us by the prophets nga maabot ang Messiah. And one of the famous uh, satanan is Katunggi Basa Nato. And... Uh, Naaputay text today that we'll come to look into is Galatians 4.4, 4, the fullness of time. Because this prophecy is being fulfilled sa Galatians 4.4. 4. Prophecies in Isaiah, example 9.6, ingon ang Isaiah, For unto us, uh, you know this because sige mo kanta ni Ani, di ba? O uh, awit ni sa itong kantata. Unto us, a son is born. Unto us, a child is born, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, ang giingon dito, and upon the throne of David, gikan siya. So this prophecy has been handed down from generation to generation. And yet, kining a message, um, ang mga tao sa una, while waiting for this, they are really excited about this, the coming of the Savior, but it took hundred and hundred of years uh, waiting for this prophecy to fulfill. While Isaiah, take note of this, 700 years before Galatians 4.4. 4. Galatians 4.4 4 said, uh, but when full, the fullness of time had come, unsay nahita bo? The fullness of time, nga naabot na, God sent forth His Son, Jesus Christ, born of woman, born under the law. So, kining gospel mga igsoon was known more than 2,000 years ago. And take note, very exciting thing that happened because the last book of the Old Testament is, kung say last book? Hmm. Ha? Okay, Malachi or Malachi. Kung saan na ninyo pag-pronounce. And from Malachi to Matthew, the, the first book in the New Testament, it took 400 years of waiting of this Messiah. While si Isaiah prophesied this, 700 years, and it took 400 years from Malachi to Matthew nga na fulfill ni. And there was silent years. Nga nung silent man? Because wala na'y prophecies after that. Wala na'y prophets nag-ingon about God. And people are thinking, 
maybe wala na si God, so silent. Ano bang muragwa na di lihok sa ginoo? But you know, that was the preparation of the fullness of time. Nga giingon sa Galatians 4.4. Okay, so let's take note because in Galatians 4.4, the fullness of time has come. Nga this is the event, nga nung gitawag fullness siya because the event was important in the lives of this in the life of Jesus Christ during that day because in the fullness of time uh, makita nato diha nga naay mga development sa technology and the advent of the science and technology because during the time Jesus was born unsay na adito uh, during the Roman Empire where Jesus was born uh, it was the the advent of kining gitawag na tog highways. Uh, the Roman government is really good on that. Establishing highways, roads for the gospel, the eye, easy to reach in the other parts of the world. And there is also one language the time. And the language is Greek. And very easy for the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, it was translated to the Greek uh, words, uh, translation, And there's one language in most part of the world, maudali ra kaayo ang pulong sa ginoo maabot. Then, uh, paki-continue lang slides, uh, not only the Roman road, uh, but it's nga ma-proclaim ang gospel, but somehow um, scattered ang pulong sa ginoo, dali ra maabot sa mga lugar. And this is the message of Christmas for all of us kay kita gadala sa pulong sa Ginoo. And you know, the church really this time has forgotten that we are in the information or good news business nga giingon, not the congregation gathering business. So take note of that because most of the churches are so engrossed and so delighted with a lot of people coming but the very important reason nga nung gaselebrate tagining Advent of Christmas is because unsa may i-gather na to and sa may i-proclaim, the good news of salvation. And mga pastors, because you are here, uh, take note po, ani, nindot kayo ni nga pamalandungon according to Rick Howerton that the role of a pastor, unsa daw? The role of, the, of a pastor is not to grow big church. Unsa man di atong role, mga pastor. Our pastor's role is to grow mature disciples who make disciples of Christ ato ng pamalandungan. So, dili, trabaho na to. Ang pagpadaghan yun, trabaho na sa ginoo, ato lang is be faithful to make disciples throughout. Then, uh, padahinta sa mga thinking, when was the message kining gitawag na to? When was the message made known? When the time was right. Mao gitawag ani the fullness of time kay mao toy saktong panahon. So, kining nga phrase, uh, fullness of time mura ni ganang mga hapit na mga nakay, no? Kung mga nakay naka, babay ka, burus ka, mga nakay naka, uh, dili makakabalo when is the day nga mga naka, but uh, at least kabalo ka that when nine months has come, we may Imuha na siyang surasurahon kay, oy ready na ka, huwag maabot na. So that's uh, what we explain about the fullness of time or the time was right. In, in the New Testament, Galatians 4.4, uh, the Greek word for the time there is kairos, meaning the opportune time has come. Nga ang gihulat sa prophecy in the Old Testament, uh, here is already in the fulfillment. Uh, pakipaspas lang slide please. Um, then, uh, the fullness of time, sa akong giingon sa inyo, because of the Romans, the Jews had also scattered throughout the face of the world. It's easy for the gospel to reach and there is only one language, as I've said. Next, then we think about how the goodness of the Lord came because with these roads, with this one language, with this good news, dali ra um, maabot sa mga tao sa tipo kalibutan. So, gitawag siya fullness of time kay timing kayo. During the birth of Jesus under the Roman rule, maude ito ang preparation. And added to that, mga igsuunan, 
Kato din na tao si Kristo, mao da itong panahon po nga the invention of uh, nag-start o mga postal office, kanang padalag mga sulat, and also uh, kanang mga mga printing industry, nagsugod anak. So, when will God send His Son for the second time? There will be a second time in the fullness of time. O, ang title na ito karun, the next fullness of time. If we ask, kanus a, mahitabo, we must also ask how to get there. What will it take to get us to the next fullness of time? So, the fullness of time, the next, kani, uh, ang gitawag na ito, Ani, is the good news of Jesus coming for the second time. He's freeing us from the slavery of power of sin and the message we already inherit to the kingdom. So when that happens, the next fullness of time will come. Maunay makita nato sa Matthew 24.14. Unsa may giingon dito. Matthew 24.14, when the gospel is preached all over the world, the last year we'll hear of the gospel, then the time uh, the second coming, the next fullness of time will come. And let's come to think of this, my Soonon, as we come to the close. Uh, we are doing missions just like we have been doing for hundred and hundred of years. But uh, pamalandungan ni nato, hantud karon, there are still 2,000 languages or more than don't have the Good News Bible wala pa na translate into their own language and vernaculars and there are still over 1 billion people in the world nga wala pa nakadungog aning christmas we celebrate this from year to year uh, about the good news yet 1 billion more than of that people in the whole world wala pa nakadungog ana so think about the time in which we live that even the cell phone tanan man siguro mo na i cell phone diha no Pinsay na yung mga cellphone ba? The cellphone has the ability to communicate almost everywhere in the world. Kung gusto ka mo participate about sharing the gospel, dili lang pagkanta sa kantata, dili lang uh, pagpaminaw sa pulong sa ginoo, mga carolings, but we can have it even in our cellphones. Currently, nindot ni nga information, and I want you to focus on this, there are over 7 billion cell phone subscri subscriptions in the world. That means there are now more cell phones than people in this planet Earth. Have you realized that? Mas daghan pang cell phone, mga kaigsuunan, kaysa mga tao diri sa kalibutan, pila ramanta diri, 2.2 billion, pila kabuok cell phone, 7 billion. Kaya ang uban mangu, tagtulo, tagupat nga cell phone, kaysa may tagtulo diag cell phone. So, though cell phone technology, we can reach the 1.1 billion people who never heard the name of Jesus in the next three years. Kung gusto mo maabot si Cristo, the next fullness of time, that will happen for the next three years using your cell phone. Amen? Kung maglisod o sulod ang gospel sa mga restricted countries like China, Pakistan, Syria, mga lugar sa mga ISIS, Uy, dali rana sa cellphone and the application. So, ang pangutan ng mga kaigsuunan, what has Christ compelled you to do? What did people look for at the first coming? Unsa, what are we looking for at the second coming? Unsa man atong gihulat. Are you excited of the next coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uy, gamay ra excited. Ang uban, dili. So, are you compelled to do something for nothing or are you willing to do something to count for zero? Meaning, uh, there will be translation of the Bible, there will be uh, these 2,000 unreached people groups makadungog sa pulong sa ginoo. So, mga kaigsuunan, uh, let's take our part on this as we open this new, this first advent of this year of, as we celebrate Ang atong pag-ampo nga mahimo tang participant ni ini. The last slide nga akong ipakita kaninyo uh, will talk about us mga pastors. So, og mga workers, the whole church, the congregation, the whole gospel to the whole world. Each one of you must participate in reaching out the whole world. 
naa ka na to ang mensahe mga igsuunan naa sa atong kasingkasing naa sa atong kinabuhi ayaw na tipigi for lifetime share it ing na imong tapad share it mm, share pag share jud ayaw na idamot oh the whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world and may god bless us on that Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. Help us, Father, to come and reflect as we come to this series of Liturgy of the Christmas Tree. May have a wonderful celebration together. And may you bless us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's have this Christmas tree nga atong traditionally gina celebrate let's come to think of this that the Lord Jesus is the blessed hope the only hope for all of us in this chaotic world gubutanan bombings here killings out there but it's good to think because there's still hope and the hope that atong gi pamalandungan ay naa diha kanato na that's available to all of us. Jesus came for the first time and that was 2,000 years ago. Yet, after 2,000 years ago, there was no significant work of the Lord advancing in the kingdom. And this time, let's come to participate of that. The purpose of the Christmas service is actually to portray the drama of God's redemption plan through songs and symbols. The journey to Bethlehem is also a journey to Calvary and ultimately to heaven. In this service, we share the message of proclaiming Jesus Christ and His victory. The pre-incarnate of Christ. The first symbol is the lamp. Our first Christmas is the lamp, a symbol for the Bible. God's eternal plan for redemption had its first inception when He spoke in His Word through the prophets in the Bible. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. But centuries before Martin Luther, tradition, the book of Isaiah already prophesied of the advent of the Messiah. Isaiah 60, 13, the glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine, the fear, the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. Christmas tree will be adorned with Christmas, meaning Christ monograms. These are signs and symbols of Christ used by Christians throughout the church history. The reason we are doing this every year, because we want to make Jesus Christ and His story to be the center of our Christmas celebration. As we explain, it's Christmas, those of you holding that Christmas will come up here to hang it at the bear tree. Now let us begin our reflection. Our first Christmas is the lamb, a symbol for the Bible. God's eternal plan of redemption had its first inception when he spoke in his word to the prophets in the Bible. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Isaiah 119, verse 105. The second of this is the Alpha and Omega. God's plan of salvation didn't begin with the first Christmas, but we 
way back in eternity past and before the foundations of the universe. That is why the first chrismon we will place on the tree is the Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the beginning of the Greek word or Greek alphabet and Omega is the last. This chrismon reminds us that Jesus Christ has always existed in eternity as the second person of the Godhead. This early Christian symbol is based upon the second person of the Godhead. Based upon Jesus' own words in Revelation 1.8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. The third symbol is the Triketra. The three interwoven arcs of the Triketra had come to serve as a beautiful symbol of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. The continuous form of this symbol shows the unity and diversity of the three persons in one Godhead. For there are three that bear witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. First John 5, verse 7. The Lion. Jesus Christ is the Lion of Judah. It was said that the Messiah would come from the tribe of Judah. And we have that song, The Lion and the Lamb. According to Genesis 49.10, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the rule, ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs. And the obedience of the nations will be his. Brethren, in these times of uncertainties, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. Revelation 5.5 5. The star with cross The six-pointed star of David has always been the symbol of the Jewish people for centuries. With the cross of Christ at its center, the, cross, uh, the star and cross symbolizes the statement of Jesus recorded in Revelation 22, verse 16. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. sing the first Then let's proceed to the birth of Christ. Christ's birth was heralded by the appearance, a special star that guided the wise men to the Holy Child. Matthew records, and behold the star, which they saw in the east, went before them until it came and stood over the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Wise men and humble shepherds sought him 2,000 years ago, 
Should we seek him today? the angel. The 400 years of God's silence in between Malachi and Matthew was spoken with the announcement of the birth of Christ to the shepherds watching their flocks in the hills outside Bethlehem. An angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today is the, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke 2 verses 10 to 11. Now the candle as the seventh sign. The eighth. When Joseph and Mary presented Jesus in the temple, Simon referred to that Christ child as a light to shine in the Gentiles. And from this statement, the church has used that candle to symbolize the light of Christ shining throughout the world. According to John 1, 4-5, In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not prevailed against it.
The names of Christ. The earliest monograms of our Lord are written in Greek letters. Originally, the New Testament was written in Greek because that was the common language at that time. The ninth symbol is the Cairo. In the original Greek, the word Christ was written, Christos. The letters Chi or letter X and Rho, R or P, were combined into one of of the earliest known Christian symbols. It is found inscribed on the walls of the Roman catacombs as early as the second century. So this Christmas reminds us that Jesus is the Christ. In Hebrew, the word Christi is translated Messiah, which means the anointed one. Jesus is the Messiah, God's chosen one, an anointed king of kings. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke 2 verse 11. Diotakai. There are first Greek letters of Jesus Christ from earliest times. These two letters have been combined into a beautiful symbol representing the Christian faith that Jesus Christ is the name above every name. And as it was declared in Philippians 2, 10 to 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and in earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. For in lowly birth thou didst come to earth and in greed to me lifting. Christ. The eleventh symbol is the descending dove. The holy child in Bethlehem grew in wisdom and stature. When Jesus Christ was 30 years old, he was baptized by John the Baptist. He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. Matthew 3 verse 16. Now the twelve symbol, the Lamb. The Lamb represents our Lord Jesus as the sacrificial Lamb for all our sins. It reminds us of the sacrificial Lamb that was used by the Jews to celebrate Passover. When Jesus went to be baptized, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For those who trust in Jesus, he is the sacrificial lamb who takes away your sins. Have you trusted him today so that death passes over you? The death of Christ. The, the 13th symbol is the chalice. The chalice symbolizes the centrality of Christ's sacrifice for our salvation as memorialized in the Lord's Supper. The cup is the symbol of the new covenant, which Christ instituted and sealed by his blood. 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Luke 22, verse 20. Now the cross. The cross is undoubtedly the most dominant of all Christian symbols, which is odd since it was a cruel symbol of Roman execution and torture. But for the believers like us, it has become a beautiful statement of faith, a beautiful statement of hope and love. Throughout the centuries, a variety of designs of the cross came out, but the message is, remains the same. It is through the cross that Jesus made the way for our forgiveness and salvation, and we are able to stand perfectly righteousness in the sight of God through Christ in His work at the cross. The Apostle Paul said, as he wrote in 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those ones who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. May the cross of Christ be always central to your life this Advent season. The Resurrection of Christ the butterfly has been used as a, sim uh, as a beautiful symbol of Christ's resurrection and eternal life because it emerges with a glorified body able to soar into the sky. The butterfly comes from, it from its time in the cocoon after being a caterpillar. It is as if the caterpillar has died, then is resurrected into this beautiful creature. It is also that it will be like for us when our bodies are resurrected at Christ's second coming. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. The next symbol are the keys. The cross keys has been the symbol of Christ's authority over the kingdom of God. According to Revelation 3.7, These are the words of whom of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Yes, Jesus Christ is holding the keys of God's kingdom. And so through him, God's kingdom was made available to all people, regardless of race or color or ancestry or previous religious background. All are welcome in God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. The next symbol is the ictus, the, the Greek word for fish. In its early years, Christianity was an illegal religion. Because of this, the sign of the fish was used by the Christians to recognize each other. By drawing the sign of the fish, the Christians re revealed both their identity and the basis of their faith. The houses where the early Christians gathered for worship were marked with this sign so that other Christians would know that the church gathers here. The ictus is one of our most ancient symbols of Christianity. Also, this five-letter word serves as an acronym of the phrase Jesus Christ, God's Son and Savior. Esus Christus Theos Weos Soter. But it is also a beautiful reminder of Christ's call for every Christian to be fishers of men. In spite of tough persecutions, the early church succeeded in spreading the gospel as empowered by the Holy Spirit. That same power exists for us today. 
as we continue to follow Christ's call to become fishers of men. Now the bell. The bell has become a symbol for the church's call for people to worship. It represents the proclamation of the gospel to the world that the Savior has come and His name is Jesus. Later, it has become a symbol of joy and merriment for the season of Christmas. From the resurrection of Jesus Christ, now to the second coming of Christ. The trumpet, the trumpet is the symbol of the great call of Christ's second coming. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. This reminds us of the real meaning of Advent. The anticipation of our Lord's second coming, which we shouted, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. sovereignty and majesty due to Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that at his second coming, Jesus will be crowned with many crowns, and the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and we shall reign forever and ever. Revelations 11 verse 15. Now let us quiet our lives before Him, the darkness, in the lives of men, and even right now, we are surrounded with darkness so much around us. Let's sing this.
this time we are reminded that in the midst of this life we have on earth, our darkness around us. Mga kaigsunan, bago nato, before nato abrihan ng suga, let's come to have our final reflection and thought that we are attached to the great light, the beacon of light, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the lights turn on, it will remind us of our individual roles, that we are part of this light, and that we have the responsibility to share these lights to the people who live in darkness. And we are those ones who are entrusted by the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's thank God because we were once in the darkness, but God has brought us into this marvelous light. And glory, hallelujah, because of the many millions and billions of people of the world who live in ultimate darkness, God has handpicked you, chosen you to be one of His. And now we are attached to this light. And let's share this light to others as well. Now, brothers and sisters in Bradford, second service, join me as we welcome, as we open these lights, as we count down. Five, go, to, three, two, one. Wow. Merry Christmas to all of us. Let's sing it. Let's pray together the Christmas prayer in unison. Almighty God, whose glory and majesty give symbols of Christ, may this Christmas ever remind us of your love entering our lives. May these gifts we have hung upon the tree become the gifts of your comfort and joy we share with each other. So may we sing of redemption. Happy dawn, for Jesus Christ is born in Bethlehem, through the heaven born. Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. At this moment, let us present our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to our Lord.
a tribute to our Lord. We will be, Norman and I will be singing Silent Night, Holy Night. <laughs> So We live in a world of obligations, Lord. Everything has a price. Because of this, we find it hard to understand your grace. We give, you give to us freely with no strings attached. And yet we know that obedience to your will is what being a disciple is all about. Help us, O Lord, to understand that our self-giving completes your salvation and is not the cause of it. Accept these offerings as a grace-filled response to your free gift of life in Christ. Amen. Let us remain standing as we sing our last hymn, O Christmas Tree.
Let us pray. Binong Diyos, salamat kay kanay mo kining kabuntagon. How you minister unto us through this symbolic thing that we done today. Lord, may every part of this worship will found favor in your very presence. In every part of it, we offer unto you. Lord, we thank you because this Christmas season, we are always reminded about you in our life. Help us, O oh God, in the midst of chaotic environment, the noise, the pollution, and everything around us. We can still be in the spirit of worship before you in our lives, in the family, and as a church. Lord, we thank you because you have given us this life. And this life so worthwhile to live because we have you in our lives. Lord, we thank you for these individuals who knelt down before you today. Lord, accept their praises and thanksgiving. Meet their needs according to your riches and glory. And Lord, we thank you for the presence of each one today who participated in this worship. Lord, we are so careful to bring it back to you all the glory, the honor, the praises, the adoration, because you are worthy to receive all of those. Lord, as we dismiss, may you continue to give us your spirit so abounding, grace so abounding before us. And thank you for touching our lives and thank you for working within us. Lord, whatever celebration we have for this Christmas, help us to be reminded that you are the center of all of those. And Lord, we are giving everything for your glory and honor. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before your presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen.
Hello, hello, hello. 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 Okay, uh, mohang yuk mi nga ibakit na to ang lugar kay na uh, mag-set up pa ang catering sa gawas for the pastor's banquet. Okay ra, magpa-picture diri. Ato lang ipa kuhan dito. Okay, kay mag-set up pa ang mga caterer na to. Okay. 